right, start this one out with a word problem. Again, if you didn't do too well writing the last word problem, hit pause. See if you can write the word problem. All right, see if you can turn it into an inequality situation. Jeb claims he's got $2 more than one-fifth of what Jen has. Depending on what she has, X, we suspect he either doesn't have enough money to pay for his own lunch or he might have enough money to pay for both of their lunches. Write a compound inequality in terms of X to show all possible amounts of money Jeb might have, then solve it and explain what the solution means. All right, so let's start with X. X is what Jen has. Jeb claims he's got $2 more than one-fifth of what she has. So one-fifth of what she has would be one-fifth times X. And he says he's got $2 more than that. Okay? Then we say, depending what she has, we suspect he might not have enough money to buy his own lunch. So that would mean maybe, maybe this is less than $23. Okay? Not having enough to pay for his own lunch. Or the other option is that this same thing, the amount of money Jeb has, is enough to pay for both of their lunches, which means it will be greater than or equal to the price of both their lunches. Okay, so this is, this is what I mean by or situation. One of these things could be true. All right. Solving uh, is not any different from last part A, really. You use an opposite operation. So again, I'm going to jump back and forth, subtract 2 from both sides. So we've got 1 fifth x is less than 21 over here. If I subtract 2 on both sides here, we'll have 1 fifth x is greater than or equal to 49. Can get rid of that one fifth by multiplying by five both sides. So we got x is greater than or equal to 245. Over here, if I multiply both sides by five, we will have x is less than 105. All right, so here's my two situations. Either X is bigger than 245 or X is less than 105. All right, solve it. Explain what the solution means. What is X? What does the problem say X is? X is what she has, what Jen has. So this means Jen's either carrying $245 with her or more. Or if she's not doing that, if she's not carrying 245 or more, that she must have less than $105 worth. Graphing this, we've got zero, 105, 205, 210, let's say 210, that's double 205, or 105, and a little bit beyond that, we got 245. Jen can have $245, so shade in $245. She can have more than $245. All right. Jen can have, cannot have 105. She can have less than 105. All right. I'm going to stop it here only because she can't have negative money. All right, so that is what this situation would look like, the possible amounts of money that Jen has. All right, that is our first situation. Now, stripping away the words, just looking at 
a typical mass devoid of context problem. This is what an OR situation looks like. Again, if you think you can handle it, hit pause, try it, uh, unpause, and see what happens. So let's go subtract 14 from both sides. We get 6m's is less than or equal to 36. Divide by 6, both sides, we get m is less than or equal to 6. Or subtract 14 on both sides. 3m's is greater than or equal to 36. Divide by 3 on both sides, m is greater than or equal to 12. Okay, either m is less than 6 or it's bigger than 12. Graph it, 0, 6, 12. m is allowed to be 12 and it's allowed to be bigger than 12. m is allowed to be 6 and it's allowed to be smaller than 6. Alright, so those are all the possible answers for m. It can be anything that's not in this range. Alright? It's almost like it's almost like one of these situations. It does not equal. It does not equal anything bigger than 6 but less than 12. Alright? It's the reverse of an and situation. That's how it works. One more for you to try. See if you can do it. Hit pause, see if you can do it. Unpause, look at my solution, and then get to work.
right, so once again, I promised I would talk about some atypical things. Typically, when you're dealing with compound inequalities and situations look like this, shading in the middle between two endpoints, or situations look like this, shading away from each other uh, from two endpoints. Sometimes, if you have an and situation, you could have something like x is bigger than 3 and x is bigger than 9, right? Something like that. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What this means in that situation, if three, if x is bigger than 3 and it's bigger than 9, it means that this piece right here is kind of useless and redundant, okay? Being bigger than 9 forces you to also be bigger than 3, all right? But you would have to shade from the 9 up because for both of those things to be true, we have to be above 9. Okay, so that's something that could happen. You could end up with, if both arrows are pointed the same direction, then it's almost as if one of the constraints doesn't exist. Okay, notice this though also. If, if instead of and we said or in this situation and they're both shading the same direction, x is bigger than 3 or x is bigger than 9, only one of them has to be true which means that we could actually start at 3 before we shade, all right? All of these things make, make the statement true. For example, if x is 6, that does mean x is bigger than 3 or x is bigger than 9, right? If x is 10, still true that it's bigger than 3 or bigger than 9. It happens to be bigger than both of them, okay? So, or situations when we're shading the same direction, uh, we shade as, as much as we possibly can. And situations, when we're shading the, the same direction, we shade the, s the smaller from the further uh, number, left or right. Okay, so that's one thing that can happen. Something else that can happen is if you say something like, a is bigger than 3, or A is less than 7. All right? So, less than 7 would mean shade this way. Greater than 3 would mean shade this way. And actually, every number in the entire real number system fulfills these requirements. Every number that you can name is either bigger than 3 or less than 7, right? If I say 8, that's bigger than 3, true. If I say 6, that's less than 7 and bigger than 3. If I say 29, that's bigger than 3. If I say negative 58, that's less than 7. Okay, so the whole entire line would end up getting shaded, and both constraints kind of are redundant. We're just saying any number works. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the last type of weird situation that we could end up with is something like this. If we say x is bigger than 3 and x is less than or equal to 2, all right, there aren't any numbers that make both of those statements true. I can't be bigger than 3 and less than 2 at the same time, okay? So this is a no solution situation, all right? If you have an and situation and there's no crossover between what you would, what you would be shading, there is no solution. Okay? And situations only include crossover. Or situations include all possibilities. All right, disjoint possibilities.